Hello, my name is Eleanor Fermon. I am a junior majoring in political science, and I've been a part of the Honor Scholars Program for my entire time here at Carroll. And today I will be uh, giving a presentation based on a research project that I was doing in that capstone class. And the topic is violence and its relationship with power. And I will be using two texts that I've previously studied in this Honor Scholars Program, and I decided to delve a lot more into. So the two texts are first, Nikhilo Machiavelli's The Prince and Hannah Arendt's On Violence. And my thesis for this project is that the loss of power, either with the use or misuse of violence, is the greatest danger to society. Now, before I get more into this, it is very important to understand that these two writers uh, were a product of their times, right? Um, Nikhilo Machiavelli was writing in the 1500s. He was giving advice to a potential leader who could unify and, and lead the Italian states to victory and glory. And Hannah Arendt is basically criticizing all of the past political and social thought on violence and power in the 20th century, especially after the events of the World Wars and the 1560s social movements. But again, you know, what does the use or misuse of violence actually do to our society? And to answer this question, I get into another question, which is who is political? This is very important because Arendt and Machiavelli are very different about it. Arendt says that every person matters in the community, right? The more voices you have who are able to talk and disagree and share agendas and persuasions, et cetera, the better, right? You build power with the more voices you have because more people are able to give their consent, their permission to someone else, right? It's kind of a very democratic, version of this where like, I give you a political official my permission to be a leader when I vote for you, right? And the more people who vote for you, the more power you give to them, and therefore the more power you have. So the political community is the community, right? So you have to include everyone. For Machiavelli though, he's like, writing from the 1500s, very elite, writing where the perspective is, you know, the aristocracy and high clergy are the only people who should be a part of politics. But he does admit that there is kind of like this trickle down effect where the politics that happen up here to make war on someone else really affect the layman and the average Joe, right? Um, just again, remember they are a product of their time, but they do answer the question of who's political. And ultimately they do agree that everyone does technically have a place in the political political community. So then the next question I answer is what is power? And this is kind of interesting because at, me, at, at first you would think that Ada and Machiavelli are totally separate on the spectrum here, right? However, they do agree that power ultimately comes from the community. And this is really important because Machiavelli, while he is writing from this very elitist uh, aristocratic perspective, he's like, you have to confirm people and you have to confirm them in that persuasion that you're a good prince. And you only do that if A, you're a good prince and B, you communicate well with them and B and C, they communicate well with you, right? There has to be this give and, give and take, ebb and flow relationship between the prince and the lonely people, right? He says that they're fickle and you have to convince them because if you don't convince them, they won't like you, they'll get rid of you, they'll throw a revolution and you'll be dead. That's bad. Arendt says that, power is inherent in the very existence of political communities, right? When you have one person and another person and they get together and they share their bright ideas, that's a political community, right? Where they're giving their agendas and perspectives, et cetera, to each other and sharing them with others. And again, like the voting, they create this power and then they give it to someone else, right? So the moment where you either disrupt that political community or turn them against each other, you disintegrate that power and there aren't as many voices and it just decreases dramatically. However, Arendt does go on to say that power corresponds to the human ability not just to act, but to act in concert. Again, going back to that point of disintegration, the moment where people start picking at each other and using violence against each other is the moment when they're not acting in concert. And they're not acting in concert means that they lose power. This is very important for later on when we discuss violence and its influence. Machiavelli, though, he says that in our own times, it is necessary for all rulers to conciliate the power rather than the soldiers, because the people are the more powerful. He admits that the ruler, the prince, must be able to give something in return to the people to pacify them, 
Why? Because the people are capable of throwing a revolution. They are capable of rushing into the palace and beheading the king. So you better pacify them and give them what they want. Otherwise, you will be out of power, Mr. Prince. So the next question I kind of go into is what is violence? So we've kind of established that power comes from the people, the political community, etc. But violence is something that they disagree on. For Machiavelli, he ultimately says that it is a means to an end and you can justify it, right? And he says that Prince must not worry if he incurs reproach for his cruelty so long as he keeps his subjects united and loyal. United and loyal is extremely important and something that I think a lot of people kind of misconceptualize about Machiavelli. He's not in favor of a total tyrant who does whatever the heck he wants, right? The prince's goal is to keep his subjects united and loyal so that he can stay in power. If the main goal is power, then to get there, he has to keep his subjects united and loyal. And in order to do that, he cannot be too violent against them. So again, violence is a means to an end. And on the flip side for Machiavelli, yeah, I mean, you have to be violent in order to kill people who are trying to invade your country or put to death the criminal for, you know, rape and fraud. Like, you know, those people should die and you should use violence against them. But on the flip side, you must keep your subjects united and loyal. For Arendt, Arendt though, she says that the very substance of violent action is ruled by the means and category, whose chief characteristic, if applied to human affairs, has always been that the end is in danger of being overwhelmed by the means which it justifies and which are needed to reach it. So she's like, I don't care if you try to justify violence, it is never justifiable because it will always overwhelm the thing that you're trying to get to, right? If you're trying to, again, have peace in your society or uh, equity or justice or whatever, and you use violence to get there, buddy, that ain't okay. And it totally undermines and disregards the actual um, things that the end goal really stands for, right? Those principles are put in jeopardy the moment you use violence. So for Arendt, it is never justified. It is not a means to an end that you should ever use. So if they both think that violence is or is not a means to an end, Machiavelli believes, again, that it can be and should be justified. Why? Again, because if you're always the nice guy, you will die, right? He says you will always come to grief among so many who are not virtuous. He's a realist here, right? Not everyone's nice. He goes on to say, though, that the prince should not deviate from what is good, if that is possible, but he should know how to be evil if it is necessary. Necessary is the key word here, right? He has to be able to, you know, act violently against others. But at the end of the day, you should know when to stop. A good prince knows when to stop and when not to use violence, when to use diplomatic or, excuse me, diplomatic or uh, more peaceful means to communicate or uh, associate a change, right? He believes that you only are violent if it is necessary. So yes, violence is justified because again, it helps the prince keep that order, again, in that aristocratic uh, top-down method of the political community in power. You know, you have to use violence in order to get rid of people who are really bad and poisonous for your community, and you make them happy by doing that. But at the same time, if it's unnecessary, don't do it. You only come to grief. Arendt, though, she's like, no, 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 no. Violence is by nature instrumental. Like all means, it always stands in need of guidance and justification through the end it pursues. And what needs justification by something else cannot be the essence of anything. So she's like, yeah, you can't use violence because you're trying to justify it with peace, but violence and peace are total opposites, like polar opposites. So you cannot justify it then regardless. And she says that what ends up happening is that when you use violence against other people, you just start like turning them on each other, right? You destroy that political community that they were a part of. So ultimately, if you want a political community that is peaceful or is just in any way, shape or form, you can't use violence to get there because yes, it might be rational to use it to like force stops force, right? That makes sense. But then she says, but violence is the total opposite of peace. So you can't ever justify it that way either. So no, violence says it's never justified. But then, okay, what impacts does violence have on power, right? 
Adat says violence can always destroy power. Always. Why? Because out of the barrel of a gun grows the most effective command, resulting in the most instant and perfect obedience. What can never grow out of it is power. Why? If we go back and go back to what I already said about how she thinks you know, power is created, it's when people act together and share ideas and are in peaceful agreement or disagreement, right? But again, you don't have people who are punching each other in the face or uh, enacting violent laws against each other in very discriminatory manners, right? Because you shut out the voices. When you use violence, you shut people down, you eliminate voices and you eliminate the potential power of that community. You can never get a growth of power when you use violence, okay? For Machiavelli, though, he's like, hey, the prince should not be able to, will not be able to maintain their rule even in peaceful times, let alone in the uncertain times of war, if he uses violence. We can say that cruelty is used well when it is employed once for all and when safety depends on it, but then it is not persisted in, but as far as possible, turned for the good of one's subjects. Again, the impacts that violence has on power in Machiavelli's world is that it has a both good things and bad things, depending on how far you go, whether or not it's necessary, who you affect, how you affect them, and whether or not it's intended toward the good of one's subject. So it does put the responsibility on the prince to not be a tyrant or a really mean guy, because again, your goal is the good of one's subjects, and they're only going to be benefited if you don't use violence against them, and if you're able to allow them to live in harmony, peace, whatever. So when you disrupt the people that you're ruling by violence, you take away their admittance or permission that they give the prince to rule. And the prince is out of luck, facing a revolution, probably will be beheaded. So violence can affect power very negatively. But again, he does say that in some instances, when it is necessary, you are able to use violence and it is able to support power and the political structure that you live in. So in conclusion, when we're looking at, you know, the question of, you know, what is the greatest threat to society and how do power and violence really affect each other? They, it depends on which worldview you're coming from. But ultimately we are able to ask our, ourselves a question like how should violence interact with political structures and power, right? Especially in the 21st century when we're seeing and facing some really unprecedented uh, things in the United States, you know, we have to take a step back and say, you know, is violence the answer? How are we able to go about changing that? Should we, what are the consequences? And should we even accept violence as a justifiable means to an end, or should we reject it because it is a delegitimizing force, right? This is kind of when you have to decide, am I going to use or permit violence because I either believe it is a justifiable means to an end, or it's not because it turns people against each other and creates this really poisonous dichotomy where people will always hate each other and disagree and it festers and it gets even worse. Or perhaps the rule of violence should just be totally reevaluated in general. When we see, you know, how do I want to interact with my community or how should communities interact with each other. So thank you for listening today. I hope you enjoyed it and I appreciate um, everything else. So.